coming to you live from the pasture here at our farm. Today's video is being sponsored by Tilly and Ginger. Ginger, Ginger. Okay, these horses are pretty dirty right now. Um, they're a little long in the hair. Doesn't remind you of anybody else, does it? <laughs> They've committed to giving horsemanship lessons, rides in the pasture, and shenanigans with the little kids all summer long. We're also gonna be giving just a little bit of a machinery tour today. Nothing fancy, nothing drawn out. Just gonna show you just a little bit of what we're working on. We've got the 4960 and the 1770 planner, one of them in the shop today. Um, gonna do a little maintenance over the next couple of weeks, uh, replacing some of the fertilizer colders, uh, bearings, uh, things that 28% nitrogen as we're applying it uh, through the corn planter on the corn at planting time can corrode and really turn to uh, a mess. This is one of the 8400 T's that we use here on the farm. I own this one behind. Uh, we've got another one down the road at, at the old uh, homestead. Uh, my cousin owns that 8400 T. Both of them have been a staple on this farming operation for the last decade or so. We pull 32 foot uh, John Deere soil finishers with them, usually with a packer or rolling harrow behind uh, to make a good seed bed. And here in the last couple of years, since I've kind of dabbled into the vertical tillage a little bit, we've got a 31 foot uh, Salford that, that we run in the corn stalks right ahead of the planter. The 4700 John Deere sprayer, it's got 100 foot aluminum boom tips. Um, I've got uh, Green Star Guidance on this. Um, I kind of run this more on the manual side. I know a lot of you guys are going to say, well, you got the ability to put uh, auto boom on it, section control, yada, yada, yada. But I just feel cost per investment that uh, running this thing um, with uh, manual mode or, or using my toggles as I go through the field, I'm just as efficient. Plus, it keeps my skills sharp uh, when I'm spraying day to day. Some of you have seen the 9650 in a couple of our combining videos. Um, this was purchased about five years ago by myself. Uh, we upgraded from uh, 7700 that my cousin still owns. Uh, I bought my 8820 uh, back in like 2008. From the 8820, I went to a 9600. From the 9600, I went to this 9650 STS, and that was like in a whole new league or a whole new world of operation. This has been a great machine. It's got a lot of hours on it. Nobody will give you anything for trade-in value. And this has just been an asset for many years now with us. The S690. This was something that I honestly thought I would never own. An S series or 600 series, 700 series X9 combines for our budget on the size acreage that this farm is, it, it's almost priced out of my reach. To relax in the evenings, a lot of times I'll look at tractor house, machinery trader, et cetera, et cetera, to unwind at night. And as I'm looking at 9860s, 9870s, something to hopefully add to the abilities of the 9650 um, or ramp up production when we're harvesting for our custom operators, or for our own acres. I, I tried to look for something, obviously like the rest of you that are kind of in a budget or fit your means of operation. We came across this S690 at auction and it was listed with a dealer and it was kind of in a bubble. Uh, that bubble meant that through the auction, um, I was able to pick this thing up at a premium to us. I bought this combine in my opinion, dirt cheap compared to what they're going for on Tractor House or Fast Line or wherever you want to look. Um, I did my homework on this combine before we started the bidding proce process. I knew that it had um, a good history of being around the same area, um, two owner machine for the hours and for the parts and, and maintenance program that have been put in this thing. Uh, over the last 12 months, this was a shoe in. So we picked up this 690 and 
instantly after we picked up the 690, we gained some custom combine acres that helped make the small payment that we have left on this machine. This thing is a beast. If all you guys that are watching me have X9s or 690s or 6600s, 7720s, and you, you understand the power that this machine right here has, um, we shall now, with this fall, 12 rows, and we're running a 45-foot MacDon FD75S on this machine, and I could easily put a 50-footer on it. I could easily put a 16-row corn head on it. Um, fuel consumption is right on par. I've got a neighbor that's got a 9870, and they run big heads on their combines, and we're burning just right at the same amount of fuel as them. And I feel very happy with the decision that we made to add the second combine to our farming operation. This here is our 9100 four-wheel drive articulated tractor. Like most of you have seen before, it's just your basic 9100 with a synchro transmission. This primarily gets run on our air seeder. And then sometimes we actually put it um, over onto the chisel plow, which it's currently hooked to. We had some last minute chisel plowing that we had to get done right before the ground froze up for the year. This right here is my John Deere 5020. This was the first tractor that I ever bought back in 1998. And there's a little bit of a story here behind this tractor. This tractor was used by us in farming. Um, we got it from a local excavator that had stopped farming with it and actually put it on a scraper box. We bought it from him and there was a little bit of damage done to the engine. We didn't really understand that at the time because I was pretty green and pretty young in my career. And what had happened is I basically blew that engine sky high. Um, got it rebuilt, got it traded off and parted ways with it because our farming operation or my farming operation was really starting to take off. And so this tractor went to Michigan. Uh, this tractor went to Wisconsin and spent all oh, the better part of 15, 16 years up there. And as I started to think about what was important, raising my kids and teaching them hard work, discipline, how to pay their bills, et cetera, et cetera, um, my thoughts kept coming back to this tractor. You know, what if I could find that tractor? And maybe the kids and I could do a restoration project on it or something along those lines. You know, that'd be just quality time spent with my kids before they either go off to college or go on to the rest of their adult life. So did some homework, tracked it down, got it bought back out of Wisconsin. And here's how you see it today. Now, I apologize that it's tucked away in the barn. Um, we will be getting this tractor out and we're going to be doing some uh, plow events with it. We're going to be showing you um, how this thing pulls, what it sounds like with that straight pipe and um, some other things that go along with, uh, uh, I think, the, the history of, of the John Deere 5020. For all of you red guys out there that may or may not be watching this video, here is a Farmall M. This Farmall M is pretty special to me. Um, I'm not gonna go into the full details of this story other than as long as I'm walking this earth, this Farmall M will always be right here at the farm. This thing runs great. Got a rebuilt carb in it. Paint's awesome. Pulls a two bottom plow like nobody's business. It was originally set up for pulling before I took ownership of it. And I've since converted it back to um, just regular tuning, regular carbing. This is a beaut. Moving on to my 2010 diesel. This was my grandpa's tractor. This tractor was bought new five miles away at the original John Deere dealership back in the day. Uh, my grandpa served in multiple wars for this country. He also worked an off-farm job full-time, put kids through school, put kids through college, farmed. 
instilled uh, his work ethic in my dad and myself and other family members to kind of carry on in his footsteps. I'm thankful that Grandpa um, had this tractor. Every day that we drive this tractor, we think of him. And this flag that's flying on the back of it is a tribute to his military service and the fact that we miss him every day. And with our faith, we know that we're going to see him again someday in heaven. As we roll closer to spring, we'll get more machinery out of the barn and showcase it to you. We're not probably going to show you everything in the shop just for security reasons, but I don't have a problem sharing our life, how hard we work, and the things that uh, interact with our day-to-day -day activities. So from Tilly and Ginger, Ginger, wrong side. Ginger, you, you need to turn around. Well, you can lead a horse to water, <laughs> as they say. Anyway, from the horses and I coming to you live from the pasture at our farm here, thank you very much. I hope you enjoy this video. Hit the like and subscribe button if you want to see more. Let's keep this channel rolling. And uh, I got one last, one last thing. Come on, get out of here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No animals were harmed in the making of this video. This video is a representation of craziness and shenanigans that happen here at our farm. Thanks for watching.